Hey there, welcome back to Coding Stuff and in this tutorial, we'll be discussing about Firebase real-time database and how to use it in Android Studio. So let's say you want to create application like Instagram. So you want your database to be online all the time. And in Instagram, if I post photo or any picture, as soon as I post that picture, my friends or my followers are able to see it. So that's happen in the real time. So we are going to save this data in real time database and in the next video, we'll see how to retrieve it. So I have created uh, this simple design, just three edit text and one button and I also add one background color to it. So at the first, I will click on tools and then Firebase. So we'll connect this app to the Firebase and then click on this real time database, save and retrieve data. So click on the connect to Firebase and it will open our Google Chrome. So I will add this project to login app. Uh, we'll be not creating a new project for this. So click on connect now. And you can see your Android Studio project is connected to Firebase. And then uh, click on this add the real time database to your app because we'll be working on it. So accept changes. Till then we'll just open our Firebase official website and click on go to console login app and here we'll select real time database okay so we'll minimize all this and first we'll add uh, all the we'll collect all the ids of this widget so over here private edit text Alt import the alt enter to import the edit text class and then we have m name then surname and then email then private button let's name it as a button Okay, so we have collected all the IDs. So now we have to create instance of Firebase real-time database. So over here we'll write private Firebase database and we'll name it as DB equals to Firebase database dot get instance. So let me show you. Okay. So as soon as we write this uh, Firebase database DB equals to Firebase database dot get instance. So we are at this line uh, we uh, will be getting a reference of this line. Okay. So now I will show you how can we reach here. Okay. So we'll just maximize this and after this we'll create another instance of private database reference and we'll name it as root equals to this db dot get reference so now at this line we are at this position okay so let me show you how can we add data to this uh, this node so we'll add on click listener to our button so button dot set on click listener new on click listener and over here we'll just call this root from here so root dot set value and here we'll pass our name so first we'll collect our name so let's name. let's create any string so string name equals to m name dot get text dot to string So name uh, root dot set value and we'll pass your name okay so as soon as i click on this run button let me open our google chrome here and the emulator will be okay so look, let's write here anything so i'll write here stew and as soon as hit this submit button you can see over here okay so steve has been added to this node but we don't want like this we want to have a child on this node 
and then we'll save the stew name to that child so just delete this for a moment and we'll minimize this we'll minimize this also so what can we do we'll just set here child so after this kit reference we can set here child and we can write here user users and now we'll click on this run button chrome and our emulator so let's write again still here and if i click on submit button so you can see a uh, child has been created uh, as a name users and the data is added here okay so let's say if you want again the child to this user also so you can after this route you can just write child let's name it as 01 and then dot set value again we'll click on this run button and our chrome and emulator let's write here jobs and click on submit so you can see in users we are, it has been created one node that is 01 and inside that node we have data as a jobs so we'll delete this okay cool sorry i have closed this okay so we are not going to pass the data like this uh, because we have three uh, three datas that is name surname and email and we can have multiple data so it's wise to use hash map over here so first we'll delete this and we'll collect the email so string email equals to m email dot get text dot to string and then string surname uh, let's name it as surname equals to m surname dot get text dot to string and now we'll create one hash map so hash map is an advanced data type in java and this is like a key value here so over here we have to pass the type of key and the type of data so we have string key and string data so string string and we'll name it as let's name it as user map and the new hash map so after this we'll, we'll write here user dot put and over here we have to pass the key first so key will be let's say name and the data will be name also and we'll just duplicate this two times this will be email let's write as em key and surname okay uh, over here we'll pass email and here we'll pass surname so that will make a little bit sense so surname and over here we'll pass email so email and then we'll call this uh, root from here root dot set value and here we'll pass user map cool so now we'll click on this run button again and we'll open our chrome browser so it is null now so it has been installed so now i will write here steve jobs and we'll write some dummy mail so steve jobs at the rate gmail.com and then we we'll click on this submit button so you can see user node created and inside that email name and surname child has been created and the data has been set successfully over here but you can see there is no random key or unique key here just email name surname so i will show you how to generate a random key so root dot will use your push method so root dot push and then set value and will pass your user map okay so push method generates unique key whenever you push the data every single time whenever you push any new object it automatically create new child based on that unique key so now we'll click on this run button so let's name it as Stu and Rogers 
write anything here okay so i will click on submit button now so you can see a uh, unique key has been created and inside that we have our values okay so this is how real time database works uh, in the next video we'll see how to retrieve this data we'll be retrieving this data into alert dialog so make sure you subscribe to channel and save this playlist so that's it thank you for watching